Welcome to our five on five. We're pleased to welcome in Kurt Hadley, the public information officer for Cascade Amateur Radio Enthusiasts. Kurt, great to see you. Thanks Hi. for coming in. Appreciate it. Thank you. So first, forgive me, what is a ham radio and what does a club of ham operators do? Well, a ham radio is a communication device that is uh, in different forms. This one here is what would be considered a home base station. It's larger and it works on high frequency. Um, and this one is a handheld model that you can get for $30, $40. And it works on very high frequency. And obviously this is a little bit more portable. You can take it with you wherever you go, where this sure. would be set up on itself. Um, this uh, setup basically is um, to communicate, especially for hobby, but in an emergency situation, these things will stay active on battery power, whereas if a uh, you know, power outage hits mm -hmm. a cell, cell tower and it goes down, then these will still communicate because we still have the ability to go mm -hmm. out on an antenna. Yeah, we, we had the big winter storm, of course, recently, mm -hmm. uh, earlier this year, and uh, you never know, experts are predicting massive earthquake. You know, in those types of situations, this stuff is all, all working? And Absolutely, yeah. yeah. This is uh, often ham radio operators across the country are called up for uh, the purpose of assisting um, city agencies, county agencies mm -hmm. in communicating if their own systems go down. Hmm. So we can, we can join with them or assist them if they're completely out um, to help them to find someone in the snow um, in an avalanche situation or someone who gets off track. We had a, a report of some people who got lost via Google Maps or yes. a mapping program. Yeah. Well, um, Up near Siskiyou Summit, there, right. there's a way that we can find them using uh, things that we build ourselves. This is a homebrew antenna made out of a tape measure. Hmm. These are tape measures. Yeah, and see that. Essentially, you hook this to the radio, and it can find a transmitted signal very, very simply. Wow, fascinating. All right, very good. We're going to take a quick break. We'll have much more with Kurt in a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to our 5 on 5. Again, we're here with Kurt Hadley from the uh, Cascade Amateur Radio Enthusiast. Brought a couple different ham radios up here, Kurt. So how many ham radio operators are there in the valley, in the area, and in the U.S.? Well, in the U.S., uh, there's approximately 807,000. Uh, worldwide, there's about 3 million. Mm. And just this last year, the ham radio ranks grew by 33,000. Okay. Since 2007, we've grown by about 150,000. So mm. uh, that's when they dropped the, the Morse code requirement. So a lot oh, more go. people got involved after that. Oh. Um, but we have a couple of different clubs in the Valley. Um, probably there's um, several hundred active members of those clubs, uh, but I think there's probably about 700 to 800 people here in the Valley that do have ham licenses. Interesting. Okay, and, and they have to get licenses, is that right? Yes, that's correct. They have oh. to be licensed by the FCC to operate this equipment. Okay. Um, it is very well regulated, but it also, it also is self-regulated. We as ham operators police those airwaves. Hmm. Uh, there's things that aren't allowed, like vulgarity and sure. Uh, you know, inappropriate um, discussions. Mm -hmm. um, we go by kind of a, a code of ethics, if you will, and police each other. And, and are, are op licensed operators required to step in in emergencies should something big happen? They are, um, they're not required, but uh, if someone is um, hearing an emergency that happens and it's broadcast over the radio, then yes, we, we do step up as much as we can. Interesting. All right. So uh, if people want more information, they want to find out uh, about the club, where can they go? Well, the Cascade Amateur Radio Enthusiasts, or CARE Club, meets uh, every second Tuesday at the New Far East restaurant. We also have a, a website, carehamradio.com, and we're coming up on a class that is uh, for licensing, which starts on January 22nd at 2 p.m. at the Smolin Center. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, we're basically not just doing a an exam prep type of a thing. We want people to learn how to do this uh, and understand it. Sure. So we teach a technician and general, which are two classes for the, the licensing, and it involves two different manuals and then a test at the end, FCC test, and uh, they become licensed and actually understand more about ham radio works through our class. Fascinating. Well, great to meet you. Thank you so much for coming you by and telling us about it. Thank Appreciate you. It. Stay with us. We'll be right back.